Hi, I'm Janine from Pangolin Photo Safaris and I'm with you on the Toby River today. Today I'm going to explain to you how to photograph dark subjects against a bright background such as the sky. Over here we have a beautiful southern carmine bee eater. However, it's by now 10 o'clock in the morning and the light has gotten quite harsh and he looks very silhouetted and dark against the very bright sky. So if we actually want to see his red color and not just a black bird, we're going to have to overexpose our shot significantly. I'm going to go to plus four here, all the way up to plus four in order to try and make his color visible again. He's sitting on that beautiful reed over there. Therefore we can apply the rule of thirds. He's looking to the right. I'm going to shift my focus point to the left onto his eye so the reed is at the bottom third and the carmine bee eater on the vertical left third of our picture. That seems to be quite quite beautifully balanced in the photograph. There we go. Here you can see our sky is turning perfectly white but we have blue skies all over the world so we are interested in that very colorful bird and his red color is really popping nicely in front of the white sky. You can't easily do action shots this way because we're asking for so much extra light that our shutter speed, our aperture and our ISO is working hard to get us this extra light. If we now would want four thousandths of a second to catch him in flight as well, we would block out too much light. So I'm bringing my shutter speed down to about a thousandth of a second. I can't go much lower with my long lens in order to ensure that we get enough light into our camera for this high key image. Hi, I'm Janine and I'm with Pangolin Photo Safaris in the editing room of the Pangolin Chobi Hotel today. Earlier on we've been photographing a carmine bee eater in rather challenging light conditions together and now I quickly downloaded the photograph for you so we can have a look together how we can work on it in post-production. Let's get started. All right, these are all the photographs I've taken of the carmine bee eater while I was trying to explain to you the high key concept on a colorful picture. You see there's quite a lot of photographs and a lot of people ask me how do you make the choice of, of your best picture afterwards? How do you know which one to delete and which one you don't want to delete? Well it's quite easy because you want to be rather strict with yourself. You want to figure out what is the best photograph. You want to have the bird looking towards you um, ideally you want to have everything in your frame maybe you want to have a little bit of space to crop so this photograph for instance I would know from the start I could delete he's not even looking towards us once you found your ideal photograph you just delete the rest there is no point in in making yourself unsure about what you want to do if if you already found the best in there here you see you have the carmine bee eater he still has a little bit of shadow on his back on that beautiful green reed of ours. It's always important if you press I you get the information on Lightroom to have a quick look at your settings. It will teach you a lot about what you did maybe right or wrong. I was in a two thousandths of a second because the reed was also swaying in the wind. Um, low f-stop for a nice portrait. Background doesn't need to be blurred because it's into the sky but I'm trying to collect as much light as possible here. If you remember correctly we were overexposing quite significantly around plus four and um, that means that our ISO was shooting up high to provide us with enough light to get plus four of light into our screen. So our ISO hit 3200 and that means in post-production we're going to have to keep an eye on the grain in our photograph. Let's go to develop mode. I first want to crop it a little bit. I was saying in the movie that I would like the reed to be roughly at the bottom third. Obviously we really don't want to crop that little tail off here. That tail is part of the bird. So maybe we can't reach a full one third. Also the reed is 
bend, maybe where it exits and enters the screen left and right, it can hit roughly one third. We want to have the bird sitting on the left vertical third here. Um, we always say very significant features such as the eye look very good if they lie on the cross points of the horizontal and vertical lines of thirds. So this could work quite well. Naturally, I'm going to shift them a little bit more to the left, actually. I work a lot according to my, my belly feeling. And then I'm going to start with our basic settings here. Having a look at our histogram shows us that our histogram is way off whack. We're doing a high key photograph, so it is running off to the right hand side, showing us a lot of blown out areas. All this white around in the background should be blown out. That was the goal. In the basic settings, I'm trying to get my exposure right. Obviously, yes, we want to have the whites as white as possible, but as I said, the background of the bird, the back side of the bird is still a bit shady. We want to pull those shadows out a little bit. So let's see that we get the whites as white as possible without losing contrast in our bird. I'm pulling the whites even wider. I'm going to try and pull the shadows out of the bird. It looks very pale and yucky now. So in turn, I'm going to bring some of the highlights back in to give them a little bit of structure and actually bring the entire exposure down enough so that the red bird doesn't look pale in our frame. By pulling the blacks to the left a little bit, it's now a fine balance between pulling the shadows out and not losing our contrast. So you see I'm balancing between pulling, making my blacks stronger and pulling my shadows out of the bird. Here we go. If we look into the bird, you see the grain quite hectically. There's nothing you can do about it at that stage. If I would pull my clarity to intensify the looks of the bird, the grain will increase even more. So I'm going to be very careful with that. I was shooting as a raw image. It's a .CR2 file, and therefore I'm going to have to sharpen my image as well. Um, with sharpening, you have the same problem as with clarity. If you have a very noisy image to start with, you see if I sharpen it now here on the right hand side, the grain and the noise becomes quite obtrusive. So be very careful with sharpening a high ISO image. Something that could help you is to mask your image. Masking means that you do not sharpen the entire surface area of your image, but you only take the most contrasty feature, the outlines of the image. I press my Alt button and therefore I can see which images, I, uh, which areas I sharpen. All the white bits in my frame are being sharpened and you'll see it is only the outline. If I sharpen only the outline, the rest will not struggle so much with noise and I can pull, pull my sharpness even a bit further. There we go. Between trying to get your exposure in the bird right and sharpening your image, that's pretty much all you need to do this, with this photograph. And um, if you find the green colors and the reeds are a little bit too fake, you can adjust your colors individually within your HSL slash color column. I'm going to go to the green and I'm going to play with the luminance of my green color to make it less lime green and a little bit more saturated green. However, I'll take a little bit of that saturation out so that that reed is not competing with the colors of my bird. The bird is after all still the main feature in this photograph. Let's have a look on full frame. There we go. A very clean cut high key image in color. Most high key images look best when they're, photo, when they're turned into black and white after all, you really don't want to be losing the red colors of our carmine bee eaters. So this is one of the few exceptions. I really hope you enjoyed this um, and it was helpful to you. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to subscribe or press the little bell button at the bottom to get notifications for any further videos coming out in the future. Thank you very much for listening in. Bye bye.